Hey guys, it's Liam from Elevate Automotive. Today we're starting a new series of me running through a whole bunch of tips from the workshop about what we would do in our setups and reasons why you might want to improve your builds from what we can see here. So today we're going to be going through DC-DC chargers, solar controllers, all of your charging system. We're going to be going through a way to optimise them, what might be the best for your system and reasons why you might choose a combined controller over individual components like you see here. So let's get into it. Alright, so the first example I've got here is pretty simple. Um, both of them are using very similar main components. So we've got a 200 amp hour battery in here, a 2000 watt inverter, and a 200 watt solar panel. So very similar setups in what you'd actually be using when you think about the main specs of a system. The differences are going to come in when you're seeing individual components. So here we have here the Manager 30. That is one unit that's going to be handling all three charging types. So when we talk about charging componentry or charging types, we're talking about three different ways you can get power into your battery. That's from DC-DC, so from your alternator, AC from shore power or a generator, and then the third one being solar. Obviously that's through a solar regulator and a panel you mount on the top, whether that's a fixed panel or a blanket you have. So those are the three ways you can get power back into your battery. Now, over here, looks, you can see it's a pretty simple system. It's nice and easy to wire up. That's one thing you'll notice when you look at a combined charger that can do everything. You've only got to put everything of your one components into there. So you've got solar going into there, start battery going into there, and obviously your AC would be plugging into that unit as well. That then only has one power output going from here down into your fuse into the house battery. Yeah, so you've got that going into the house battery over here. One benefit with these systems is you've just got much more compactness with it. So you don't have to worry about having individual component tram mounting that somewhere. It's in one nice spot, you know where everything is. Also, you'll find generally with components like this, not just the manager, with other systems that are out there as well, they might have a bit more in terms of monitoring because it's all through one product. So you can easily see what each thing's doing. Sometimes when you look at individual componentry, you might not get the same from that point of view. One downside with them is you've only got one component. So we'll get into that a bit further on when we go to the second system. But you've only got one component, so that means only one thing doing your charging and one thing that can fail. And that's everything that's gone. So if you lose one component, then you've lost everything entirely. That's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing that's not the best with them is things like solar. So if you've got a 200 watt panel and you also want to add a blanket onto it, you're going through one regulator. If you've got another 200 watt blanket, that's going to be fine, they both work fine. But if you're adding a 200 watt solar panel on the roof and maybe a 300 watt blanket, that 300 watt isn't going to be working at its full efficiency. So that's why something like adding a separate solar regulator is always a good idea and that's why we use them in these systems you see here. So one other thing that's a bit of a downside with a single component like the Manager 30 is that they don't work the best with multiple different charging components going at the same time. So if you've tried and get your solar panel going in and some DC-DC charge at once, you might not be getting the full 30 amps out because the Manager will always be a bit careful with how much DC-DC it puts in. So one thing we've seen that happens a lot with these is that only you're checking the solar every 100 seconds. So let's say you're getting 200 watts in from this panel, that's about, let's just say 10 amps you're getting in from the panel. And then all of a sudden you go into a tunnel, the, D the manager 30 doesn't immediately know you've gotten no solar. So you're still gonna be putting in 20 amps in from the car for the next 100 seconds until your solar comes back on. So let's say you're going through a tunnel for five minutes or you're going under trees for five minutes. You're gonna be waiting 100 seconds before the DC-DC goes, oh, I'm only getting no amps from the solar, I'm gonna turn itself and kick myself back up to 30 amps. So that's one limitation of going with one system is they're not often designed to getting a full efficiency out of each system at the same time. So here I've got example two. This one's a bit more complex. So we've still got the same new system of same battery, a 200 amp hour battery, still the same 200 watt solar panel and 2000 watt inverter. But what we have here now is we've got three different charge components for your three different types of charging ways. So we've got a DC-DC there to charge obviously from the alternator as well as doing a solar Anderson for your blankets. We then have a solar controller or MPPT here for the roof mounted solar panel that's fixed and we have a 30 amp AC charger which will be doing the AC charging when you parked up a caravan site or you're plugged into a generator. So the difference with this is you've obviously got individual charging components the positives that you look at it from this point of view and the reason why we often recommend this to most customers is you've got more redundancy for each thing. So let's say you're driving down the road and you blow a fuse and your DC-DC charger. 
while yes, you won't be getting any DC-DC from a vehicle, you will still be getting solar from your panel on the roof. And you also have the ability of when you get to a site at the end of the day or back home, you can plug it in to charge that battery back up. Whereas if you'd blown a manager or you've blown an all-in-one combined charger, that's it, it's gone. You've only, you've only got one way of charging. So that's the difference with this. You've got so a lot of backups. The other thing which we love, which is a big thing when you're getting into bigger systems, is you're getting more ability to get power in faster. So having these as individual components means you can get them stacking on top of each other. So for example, you'd have a 40 amp DC DC charger while you're driving getting 40 amps from that in from the alternator. But if you've then got your 200 watt panel on the roof, you get 10 amps from that. You've got 50 amps then in total going in to the, to the battery. But you could also then turn, the, if you wanted to, let's say you were at a caravan site, you really want to get charging quickly. You want to plug it in. I want to turn my car on to start idling and putting the DC DC charger and I've got my solar panel out in the sun. They're all going to be going out once and you'll be able to get a much higher amount of power in. So you get about 90 amps in total when you've got the whole system going together. Which means, especially if you're using an inverter like these 2000 watts we fitted here, and you're using them to cook overnight on an induction cooktop or an air fryer or something like that, you're going to be using a ton of power, which is fine if you're back at a caravan site and you can plug your 30 amp charger in overnight, it's going to charge it pretty slow. But if you're trying to get that power in quickly and you're trying to stay for multiple nights, you're going to want to think about getting power in quickly, especially if you're only doing a 30 minute drive every day between a campsite or back to the beach and back in, you might only be doing 30 minutes driving, which means you really want to be getting a punch of power in as fast as possible. Yeah, so the, the downsides when you come to this second example, is you can see obviously we've got individual components. That can often mean it's a bit more complex for you to fit up the system. It does require a bit more in-depth knowledge and making sure you know what each component is really doing. Um, it also is a bit more, there's a bit more space you have to use for this stuff. So with each component, there's also a bit more space to put stuff in. When you compare them side by side, they're probably not going to be that much bigger than an individual charger because they're both going to be using the same components inside. They're just put in different boxes. The downside and the reason it takes more space is when it comes to the wiring and the fusing of it all. So obviously you're going to have to be running individual cables for everything, which means you're going to have the space for the new cables. You've also got a lot more fuses. So you can see here, we've only got three fuses. Over here, we've got five, which means you're going to have a lot more space to allow the fuses and run those cables nice and neatly through wherever you want to run it in your interior. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that they can get a bit more costly when you come to fit them up. So especially if you're looking at getting someone to fit it up for you, there's going to be a lot more cost because it does take more time to wind these individual components rather than just one simple charger to it all. The other downside you'll have when looking at individual components like this is the communication aspect. So when I talk about communication, I mean communication between each component and like the shunt you see there. So when you have a system like this where it's all one, it knows what everything's doing because it is the only thing in that system. When you've got individual components like this, there can sometimes be a bit of loss because it's not the whole system. It's individual components doing individual things by themselves and then just talking to each other. So sometimes you'll see losses in communication between the two of them if they're different brands. So if you had like a Red Arc DC-DC charger and you had a Victron solar controller, they might not contact each other. So there could be a chance where the solar controller is putting in power and then the DC-DC might go, oh, I have to throw all myself back because the battery's getting full. So that's the only downside is you might want to have to plan it a bit more ahead of time. So you might want to think about definitely, you're starting out your system, you might not want to console a controller to begin with, but you might be thinking down the line, oh, I'm thinking about fitting a fixed panel. So you probably want to then think about what brand you're going to go with and making sure each component can speak to each other and get enough communication between the two to make them function to their proper efficiency. Yeah, so that's some of the pros and cons of the two different versions of either having a single charging component or having three individual charging components. So one thing that is really important to think about is how much power you're pulling off a system. That's really going to dictate how you want to set up your charging. So if you're only having like a small fridge and just some small camp lights, having something like an individual charger like that will still be fine. You don't have that much power you're pulling off of it all the time. You can find with trickling it back in, not at a slow, not at a sorry, fast um, current. But if you're going to go the opposite and you want to have induction cooktops, you want to have multiple fridges, you might want to run aircon if it's a caravan. That's when you want to look at something like this with individual components. It's going to allow you to pump that power back in nice and quick, just as quickly as you're pulling it out. So that's often the reasons why you'd look at the differences between the two of them. The other thing is that this one, often as we said before, much easier to fit up, less componentry needed, less cabling needed. So if you're looking at doing it yourself, that might be the better option. But you can still easily fit this up yourself. It's just going to take a bit longer and you have to think about a bit more about how to wire each component up to get the best out of them. 
So that's the main difference between individual charger versus three separate charging components. As I said, this is a new series we're going to be running through here about different tips we're going to run through the workshop, whether that's different ways we set up our systems or different reasons why we do our wiring the way we do. Um, we don't have a name for this series just yet, so if you've got any suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below and we'll have a look at them. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next one.